Dr. Dare is going to present on the building and grounds, our fiscal year tw uh, 2020 buildings and grounds budget. So as Kendra mentioned, as part of our budget process, um, we have the buildings and grounds budget for your review. Uh, just as kind of a brief summary overall, this represents our uh, primarily our maintenance type items. Uh, and, and smaller, minor improvements to our facilities. Uh, these, are, these are not major construction projects or anything like that by any means. Uh, based on a mix of identified areas of improvement, so areas where there have been uh, ongoing maintenance issues or those kind of things where we can improve our, our structures. Uh, historical data, uh, we keep rotations for roof replacements and those types of things. And then also items from the long range facility process. So maybe items that aren't in the long-range facility plan necessarily, but were identified through that process as areas uh, for improvement. Larry Moreland and his staff do a great job uh, tracking and, and, and maintaining our facilities, and we appreciate their efforts. And so the reason we bring this to you at this time is a lot of this work will happen over the summer. So in your improvement, uh, hopefully your approval tonight will allow them some time to order supplies, make plans, and, and begin that preparation because summer will be here very, very soon. So as we go through here, I, I have no intention of going line by line, but certainly if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, but I would like to call out a couple of things that are maybe a little more unique um, or um, out of the ordinary uh, from what you would see year to year. So the first page, uh, this is in your packet on page six, starting on page 60. Um, so if you go to 61 and 62, those are district-wide uh, um, expenditures representing a lot of our control systems, uh, things that, are, that expand across multiple buildings. Uh, some of this is just built-in um, contingencies for the things that happen. Uh, we have a lot of equipment. Things break down. It just happens that way. But one thing I would call out to you on this is uh, there is a, um, a line item up toward the bottom of 62 for a salt spreader. Uh, Larry says if we want to be able to walk on the parking lot when it ices, we need a new spreader. So that's a, that's a new thing. Moving on to uh, Wyman, pretty standard uh, items there. Uh, they are going to replace the roof on the gazebo on the playground. Uh, it's just a maintenance item. It's, it's time. I'm going through these fairly quickly. Again, please stop me if you have questions. It, is that the one that's in the early childhood yes. area? Yes, yes. Mark Twain, um, you'll see an a, um, area there for roof replacement over the kitchen. That's a regularly scheduled um, rotation for the roofs. Um, that's uh, not a huge area, but uh, keeps us in, in focus there. Moving on to Truman, uh, most of this is self-explanatory. You'll see one there for adding walls to the library. Uh, obviously, the Truman Library is in our facilities plan, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but temporarily, uh, we've come up with a plan to put up some, some temporary walls to help remove the library from the hallway, essentially. So if you've been in that facility, you realize that if you're in the hallway walking around the library, you're essentially in the library. It's very distracting. It's very difficult to maintain uh, in the structural climate within that library. So this is not a, a permanent fix by any means, but it will help the situation. Middle school. Uh, most of this is, is self-explanatory, and a lot of these came from the uh, facilities improvement process. Uh, and uh, nothing really major to point out to you there unless you have questions. There is one area uh, out of the softball field from the dugout to the seating area. It's kind of a ponding area. It's well-traveled, and so it tends to hold water. So uh, putting a sidewalk where everyone walks, essentially. Junior high. Uh, we began replacement of the library shelving uh, this, this just within the last few weeks. Uh, and then uh, uh, RTI folks will, will help us with that, uh, make some improvements there, and add a second round to uh, complete that project this summer. Uh, some acoustical panels that came from uh, the second classroom that we're using for a band room at this point uh, is, is kind of in the middle of the hallway and the sound is carrying outside the classroom. So that's an effort to help dampen that. It won't solve the problem, but again. And then those are movable. So if, if things progress in the future, we can move those to other spaces. Also would point out uh, replacement of the landscape uh, ties in the outdoor classroom. Uh, those are, are well-worn. What we've done is taken some of the landscaping blocks from the bar property 
and moved in there, but we didn't quite have enough. So this would be to purchase a few additional there to finish that project. <coughs> High school, uh, a couple things to point out there. Uh, some tile in the back hallway, that's the hallway between the main gym and the second gym and that back hall. Um, part of that was just age and part of that was uh, some needed cleanup from the, the gym floor replacement in that second gym from this, uh, last summer. And then uh, you'll see a couple of things there where there's some references to converting a shower area and some restrooms to storage facilities. Those are unused areas and so it's just an effort to make them usable spaces. RTI, um, if you've been to Walmart, you can kind of get a better image of what we're talking about here. But uh, we were looking at the tile in the third hallway, which is mostly um, shop spaces. Uh, that needs to be replaced. But rather than replace that, we think we're going to take it down to the concrete and polish the concrete. We think it'll hold up better and be a more viable space there. So uh, that's what Walmart's doing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if that's what Walmart's doing, that's what do we're going to do. Right? Create any dust. RTC, uh, really nothing major there. Uh, same with uh, uh, central office. The uh, custodial maintenance supplies is a standard line item. Uh, so 72, 73. Getting over to 74, uh, transportation. We've got some uh, a little bit higher amount there for asphalt repairs than what may be normal. We've got some areas where the buses park, uh, where the, the you know the, just over time they've wore the, the asphalt out. So we're going to cut those areas out and replace them probably with concrete. So we'll, we'll be a little more durable. And then last are the are the uh, what I would call maybe the little little more involved projects. Uh, again, not not going through all of those, but you'll see uh, some some several areas of roof replacements. Those are scheduled uh, for the most part. And then a couple of canopies, awnings type things, middle school and junior high, uh, and car circle lines just to help with student, students getting back and forth. And uh, some heat and air controls. We've had some issues in the high school kitchen area uh, between the air conditioner and the chillers and all those things. So adding a control system to help keep those systems from overheating and overcooling so that we maintain the system longer. Overall, reduction of about uh, 28,000 from last year. Again, appreciate Larry and his his efforts in uh, making our facilities look nice and function well for our students. And several items from the facilities plan concerns, yes, like sir. the uh, bench covers for the student drop-offs. Yes. Yeah. So. On all the roof areas, mm -hmm. I know there's a plan in the facilities plan that was color coded. Yes. So. Would maybe I don't know if these relate to those areas. Some of them do. Most of them do, Jim. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it would be so good we'll to get those them. updated and maybe yes. even put on this yes. uh, your penciled that. plan so you know, hey, we did the pink area. Right. Okay. Because ten years from now they'll be looking for that information. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> when did we do that? <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions for Dr. Dare? Uh, do I have a motion to approve the buildings and grounds budget? I'll make the motion that we approve the buildings and grounds budget. I'll second that. All, right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, a couple of Board of Education future issues. Our next board meeting is May 2nd, also May 16th, June 6th, just so you know that's my birthday. June 6th, then? June 6th, is and June 28th. Just oh, saying. good to know. Good yeah, to two know. birthdays, June 6th and June 28th. Huh. <laughs> Just June 6th, Tony. <laughs> then we have another meeting, June 28th. I believe that's a morning meeting. Is that right? Probably. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Old business. Uh, we'll talk about our long-range facility and program update, Dr. Dare and Dr. Zalas. You're going to hear less from me and more from Dr. Dare and Mark Ruther, our architects here tonight. So, hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Uh, hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. Well, between Dr. Dare and Mrs. King and Mrs. Ervos and Mark, we've done well, we've done a lot of work on the survey. Uh, you're going to see a couple examples of what the survey might look like, but more 
impressively maybe be the visualization of some of these things that we've been talking about. So with that, take it away. Okay. Uh, again, pleased to have Mark with us tonight, and, and he's going to bring the, the power tonight. Uh, uh, so he, gets, he gets the flashing glory. No, we appreciate the work that he and his staff have done. They've been very responsive um, as we've changed our minds numerous times and, and uh, gone through these. But So what you, what you have in front of you, you have a little packet there. Uh, keep in mind, we're still in draft form. So understand that, that we're not done uh, and, and we're still tweaking as we go, but we're getting very close and, and it's getting exciting. So I do want to walk you through. Okay, just hold on that all minute. We'll, we'll come back to it. You're good. Uh, walk you through. What we wanted to give you was uh, just an idea of kind of what we're looking to put in the survey so that you get an idea of some of the images that go along with it. Uh, so if you'll just walk through me, we're going to go through these fairly quickly. You're familiar with the survey, uh, but I want to talk you through some of the imagery and why we've chosen what we've chosen. So a couple of overall comments. One would be uh, we really tried to come at this with a, with a focus on a balance, and that balance between we want to provide enough information to, to plant ideas and thoughts so that, so that we can get good responses and good feedback from our community. But we certainly don't want to put so much detail and information out that we lock people down into thinking that, that this is the thing. Um, so we've tried to keep that balance as we go through, and I think you'll see that. So question one, uh, obviously, is safety and security. It's hard to put uh, a picture with that, so to speak. So what, we, what we've done instead is, is focused on the areas that we've looked at and talked about, and we've tried to give kind of a breakdown of what those things could look like. And again, hopefully leaving that open uh, to, to suggestions. So there's four main areas. Again, I'm not going to read this to you, but just in summary, uh, entry access. So we're talking about secure access, secure doorways, uh, electronic door locks, those types of things. Uh, visitor and volunteer tracking. We have a lot of people in and out of our buildings for very positive reasons, uh, but it would be nice to have a little, little better grasp on who's in and out and where. And then in the event there were an incident, we could also know instantly who is in the building that may not normally be there, so we can account for everyone. Communications, uh, this involves internal and external. So just as an example, one of the systems we looked at would, would be, we would be able to interrupt all forms of technology in the, in the building. So it would take over projector screens, computer screens, Chromebooks, all those things with information if there were an emergency. The nice thing about that system is it's not just a fire alarm. It would actually provide instructions on what to do. So we can be very specific with those messages and uh, try to get the information out very quickly. The second piece of the communications is our external communications. Obviously, our, our uh, first responders and community um, Organizations are very good to work with us, and we appreciate that relationship. But being able to, to, to communicate with them directly and quickly, uh, it, maybe even with just the push of a button, um, those types of things, so that we get, we get the fastest response possible. And then attendance and reunification. If for whatever reason we had to evacuate a building, uh, what would be our, our best way to get parents and students re reunited so that we could track who had been taken care of and who we still had uh, to account for? So that's that piece. Question two, I'm going to go through fairly quickly. Um, Mark will come back to that one and, and give you some more detail and kind of talk through the, the big process there on, on some of those pieces. So what we've done is tried to give everyone a site plan, which gives them an overall picture of where an addition could possibly go, and then a little bit more of a detailed floor plan so they can kind of orient themselves within the building structure itself and, and what that might look like. So for each of these projects, you'll, you'll see that as we go through. So question 2A uh, is the uh, uh, standalone auditorium. So you'll see a site plan of where that would sit in relation to the high school, the surrounding areas. And then you'll see a, um, a floor plan and, and how that kind of ties into those entryways. Also part of that process is the library renovation at the high school. So we've included uh, some of the, the renderings that Brandy um, Graydon did. Or, I'm sorry, Bailey Graydon did. Um, and uh, I apologize if your pictures aren't super clear. The, the photocopies are, are a little darker than the actual images. But, uh, we, we want those to be seen as well. Question 2B is the uh, uh, building of a new gymnasium, field house type situation with the renovation of the existing gym into a performing arts center. 
Uh, and again, Mark will, will take a lot more detail, take you down a little more detailed path with that here in just a few minutes. But again, site plan to show the proposed gymnasium, a little bit more of a floor plan to show the two uh, structures, and then again, the library renovation. Now, that seems redundant. However, we would like to be able to put this information out so that if someone wanted to come back to the survey at some point to look at specific items, they could do that and get the full picture. So there is some redundancy through these, but we did that intentionally. Question three, of performing arts spaces and uh, conversion of the existing spaces into some weight room facilities and, and uh, physical education spaces. Again, and I, and I can't say enough about uh, Mark and his staff for trying to keep these consistent uh, in the best way possible so that uh, we're giving the same types of information on each question so they're, they're hopefully be clear in what we're proposing. There are a couple of options in this one. These were taken from the facility, long range facility plan. We cleaned up the images to, to focus in on specifically what our survey questions are asking for. So the, that's the process we went through. A couple of different options here uh, as far as location of where those new uh, classrooms could go for the performing arts and then showing those renovated spaces as well. Question four is the science room renovation. So we've included, uh, again, a floor plan to kind of show where in the building those lie, but also uh, just as a placeholder at this point, our intent is to put some pictures in so people get an idea of the, the things that we're wanting to update um, and why we, we may need to, uh, to do that at this time. Question five uh, deals with expansion of our pre-K program. Just as a reminder, uh, of course, we, we are talking about a waiting list and, and some closures of some programs within the community. So uh, we felt like we needed to look at this as a possibility and see what people thought. So what this involves, and, and we will add some um, text boxes, so to speak, on these images to help guide, guide folks through these. But this shows what could possibly be done at each of the elementary schools. So again, not saying that we would do it at each, but showing where if we went to Truman to do an addition, where that could possibly be. So you'll see a proposed addition at Mark Twain. Then you'll see a proposed addition at Truman. The proposed addition at Truman includes the library renovation, but we also, again, will repeat that for the library renovation question. We feel like those are very much in the same. Also on the Truman, I should mention that we, we incorporated the security component because that would be a part of that process. We would put a new secure entrance on the front of Truman as part of that library renovation. So it's, it's, it, it's hard to separate those pieces because they are all very much tied together. And same thing at Wyman. You'll see the classroom, possible classroom additions there. Question six is the Truman Library. Again, same images, but you'll see the, the proposed um, secure entrance with the classroom additions there and the renovation of the existing space into a, a new library space. Pictures of the library. And again, we'll add some captions to these to show that uh, those are indeed hallways and common areas outside of those bookshelves uh, to kind of help paint the picture because not everyone's going to have been in the library. And we'll, we'll uh, Gina took these pictures for us and we appreciate that. And, uh, we'll, we'll scale them down and, and crop them and, and uh, caption them so that they, they tell the story that we want to tell there. And then uh, last but certainly uh, not intended to be least is uh, um, RTI. So you will see... Um, just some proposed lab spaces renovations, um, uh, shop space renovations, and then also we included restroom renovations there because those are a little overdue. So one thing I will mention before I, I, I turn it over to Mark is if you look at um, the question, the actual question for number six uh, that deals with Truman Library. Sorry, I skipped this. That's my fault. We added a statement about the safety component. Uh, because, again, it was just really impossible to separate that. So uh, just wanting to make sure people understand that we are intentionally uh, putting that out there for consideration. Ginger, do um, you want to pull up that survey? Ginger worked. Um, uh, we, we've started trying to place this into an electronic form. Uh, obviously, we have work to do. Um, scroll up just a little bit, Myra, please. 
So um, again, we'll, we'll clean that up, kind of give a nice introduction page. Scroll down, please. You'll see the same information that is that you have on paper in front of you. Um, we have played with this uh, and looked at it on phones, tablets, those kind of things. So that's part of this process. That's uh, making sure that it's, it's viewable from whatever format people will have. Uh, we're having very good luck with that. So I'm, I'm pleased to tell you I think we're in a good place there. So as you go through, we'll have these separated out. So the questions will be separated. Uh, they'll get to a question one. So question one is that safety and security. Uh, and then there will be a link there. So Myra, if you'll click that blue link. You're okay. Scroll down right there. That blue line. To test. You may have to double click it. There you go. So as they click on the links, it will bring up the images that we included. On the phones, um, it, it was working very well. The, the, the language is there and everything. When you click the link, the one thing I would say is you do have to turn your phone sideways to get a good image, but it, it does work well. And so we'll play with that a little bit. Um, and then, Myra, if you'll go back to the previous tab and scroll on down. Again, we're, we're, we're in the process of building this, so it's not live, um, but um, we're getting there. So, uh, go yeah, go to next. No, you're good. Oh, is it already there? Okay. Oh, all right. So, the other one, we, we just loaded a couple of these to kind of give you an idea. So, if you'll click on one of those blue links, it doesn't matter which one. Probably the bottom one, just for demonstration's sake. So, again, you'll see it's the same images that we've, we've given you in paper form uh, that will load so that, that they can see what we're talking about. Absolutely. Yesterday when we walked down the hall, we found three typos. And we swear we looked at it at <laughs> nausea. So just as we were sitting here, Charlotte pointed one out to me under question three. Okay. Uh, second sentence, there is only, could be a one. <laughs> the word one. I don't know how. version whether it transposed the same way. I don't know. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. We've, we've all looked at it a hundred times, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to let uh, Mark take over here and show you what we've been working on on the uh, uh, Performing Arts Center process. Okay, I think if you bring up, I'm going to kind of explain a little bit of the process. It's been kind of exciting because we've, when we started talking about this, I talked to um, Kyle about how we want to move ahead and um, possibly get into a 3D walkthrough of the facility. So that's it's a building process. We don't have this finalized building walkthrough tonight. However, what I kind of want to explain oh. to you, to, well, Collective. Well, we, have one. we have one, but it's some it's some images we're going to be able to show you to kind of show you where we're going because it's we have to have it all completed before we can actually walk through the site or walk through the building to bring it all together because we're not. But I think you're going to see a lot of progress as far as where we've been. And, and the first image, um, if you could bring that up. Uh, first, go to the. Say that again. So one of the things that we did, we thought this was kind of a, a, a unique opportunity to bring in some uh, technology that is what we call LIDAR uh, technology and actually had a, a drone on site and we act, walked, actually walked through the facility with this handheld device. And we can, we can 
walk through this and actually move it, but there's so, it's basically, it's collecting data points. It's taking light and it's bouncing back and it's putting all these millions of points in, in, a, in a point cloud. From that, we take it back to the office and with Revit, we're able to build a model and of this. So this is the LiDAR scan and you can see on the bottom, the, the ones on the top are from the exterior, from the, from the drone, which the day we were trying here, we were trying to get it and it was, uh, sleet was coming, and, <laughs> but I thought we can't miss this date because you're on spring break, so we, we went ahead and did it, but um, it's a pretty interesting uh, way of pulling all this information together. On the, on the bottom one is the actual inside of the uh, auditorium. And you can actually see that there were, uh, the girls were uh, practicing basketball. You can kind of see <laughs> those ones, kind of, kind of interesting too. But um, it, so I just wanted to show you this um, and not actually go through and show you the 3D of it. But now the next image would be the, the video. What's, so from this, we actually took it, and it's going to move pretty quickly, but I don't want to, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but just kind of the, the process. So from there, then we start to build this, this model from the, uh, of where, where you're at. And so now we're building all these mo the model from this image, um, or from the point cloud. I keep referring to the point cloud, but um, it's just pretty interesting to, uh, to get that. So then... Um, and all those little dots are all of the little points that are reflecting back as we, and we can get to a point, as you go through all these spaces, you can get down to a sixteenth of an inch. Um, and, and from this also, it really helped because you start seeing how many... If you don't have those uh, functioning at that, uh, on that particular performance, you might be able to put up additional seats. Um, so from that, um, then you, you, the, the seating, from when you come in on the stage, you're going to go up at a uh, 1 in 10 or an uh, ADA accessibility uh, ramp to the of a arc uh, of an intermittent, intermediate um, walkway so that you'll have a place there that the people at uh, ADA can actually come up and have additional seating up there. And then from the back up in the upper house is additional seating to get to a control booth in the top and then also uh, a lighting platform in the back. So if you look at the uh, auditorium section to the upper right, that is a section where you can kind of see the low slope in the front of the house and then when you get to that walkway, you'll then go up at a steeper rake on the upper portion of that. Um, the bottom right kind of shows you that 3D model that we're starting to show, and the, the, the white boxes in there represent the clouds. So the roof's been taken off, and you can see the, the, the roof, the, the clouds in, in the space. So we haven't developed the backstage of the, the stage and the back rooms, but now that we've got the model, we can all we can start. And you can kind of see the pixelation of the, of the of the section and also the 3D model that 
it's that's that point cloud again that, that we developed. So or, um, the next oh, amazing. photo. So the, so the oh, next wow. so, so the next photos or, or the images or when you'll walk in and what we've done is the um, wherever you see the 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 frame or the purlins from the we've put uh, some drywall splayed walls I'm gonna call them splayed walls so that they're angled so that it helps the acoustics in the in the space that it's got, it won't let the, the sound die up on the back wall there'll be acoustical panels to absorb the sound so as it goes past your ear it'll it'll die in the back of the of the of the space you can kind of see how the lower slope if you from the facilities committee you, if you remember we had kind of talked originally about do we have that front space as a as a flat area that you have stackable seating dr darren when we we did that first and we can put it in a drawing it looks really pretty to have all these stackable seatings and an arrangement but the second people walk in and start arranging it's going to be loud it's going to be so we kind of went to this of the of the permanent seats in the front as well um, but on a lower slope so that you can accommodate the ADA or the handicap accessibility and then you'll have steps to the sides on each side you'll go up to that intermediate rail and then you can go up into the upper seats um, but the the bright um, there would be a wainscot going up and um, we've talked about a lot of things on how we could put a wood texture and um, a lot of interesting and, and exciting types of things that we can do there but then there would be a light shelf that you could put LED lighting up there and we've done some really interesting things with LED lighting to where you can change the light to where it's a, if it's if it's a performance that you want to have a lot of interesting lighting and um, change colors during the performance you can do that with the and the, the display will help kind of sh kind of provide a more interesting um, appearance the the light clouds you see up there the sound clouds up there those are up there to help deflect the sound uh, so that it doesn't um, you put acoustic back uh, on the back of those so that it just kind of dies as it goes up into that up in that area but um, if you go now down to the bottom one um, that'll kind of show from the back lighting platform down to the um, to the stage and you can kind of see that thrust stage where depending upon the type of performance you could pull you could bring that uh, they could come out into the actual into the house itself um, so that's up on the very top on the left hand side looking down with a with a, a light um, uh, for a lighting platform um, but as we go through there's still a lot uh, that we want to render in the actual materials um, but the thought would be we, we talked about there being about a 20 to 30 second video when we do this so that it doesn't get too long and we would come in from the from the lobby area in maybe walk up to the top and then scan back around so you can actually see this image but it would be a, a walkthrough uh, of that so um, and the other thing too is when we start loading this and we start building this after we're done it could be as long as like a almost a weekend that we would have to set it before so the the model starts to render all the different materials so we'll be in talking about a number of different things before we actually but this is the exciting yeah, part to really yeah. start pulling this together <laughs> and when you start looking these spaces you think what can you can you make this look like and I'm real happy with how it started to come together so um, comments thoughts is the, the finished video would be intended to have that kind of clarity as we're seeing here yes but in motion and be able to go through and get a quick scan of everything and even a little bit more and even a little bit more clarity with trying to pick up some of the materials and the um, one of the things if you go back down to the other or go up I guess one of the things we were looking at we went online we were looking at all these different options I don't know if any of you have been up to UMSL uh, University of Missouri St. Louis on that wall the in back of the lower house but on the up in front of the upper house 
you can see some little triangles that there's a type of seating that they've used up to UMSL where you can actually, it looks, it's almost grayish. looks, it's just a little, uh, basically a, a triangle or a rectangle on the wall. You can actually pull down the seat and it reflects, it, it, it comes down and there's like an accordion that comes down and you can sit on it and then when you're not using it, they just, they just go back up. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we found really interesting to, to be able to increase the seating. Yeah. But if it's not a not a big time performance, you just don't use it. And then so, so that's why we've left the aisle at about six to seven feet, uh, seven to eight feet, so that if you bring that down, you'll be able to. So we we want to go look at the seating. We actually have contacted a rep and actually, but it was, and I have to. They said you could actually put 1,200 pounds on this, and I want to try it out. If I can sit on it. Really well. <laughs> But yeah. it's it's sure really it's some interesting because we were sure. really we spent a lot of time trying to think about how how to increase the, the volume in the seats in here. So, we're, we're still so what would that potentially it. add if it worked out the way that it sounds? That like that would add about 43, 44 seats for that. So um, we we just we still have to do a little bit of research. Sure. And that, but, but we're still in the range of where we we said. Um, you can tell that I'm real hesitant to tell you how many seats are in there. Yeah. I, no but, kidding. But it, but it was, <laughs> but it's in the range of where we talked about in the. Um, I don't think 1100. <laughs> it, it was. It, I think we posted 720 to 750, and we're on. We're in that range. Maybe with these, we could get a little bit higher. So, but it's kind of a. It's kind of a. It's any decision we make to get a more comfortable seat in there. You add another inch, yep. two inches, right. next thing you know, you're cutting the seat out. So right. now it becomes comfort level, it becomes staggering, staggering the seat, so you, you can stagger the sight lines, um, and making sure we've got really good egress out of there, because there's nothing more frustrating than going into a performance and standing there for 10 minutes to be able to So mm -hmm. we'll be talking about that, and it's a real balance, but I'm just happy we're, we're real close to where we had talked about with um, and the lighting. I, I'm just, this is the exciting part. This is kind of, mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope um, this is what you, it's not moving yet. I, I, I'm, um, so Sedalia has a new auditorium. It was fully funded by a, a local donor, and, and they have no aisles in the center. Uh, only, and I said, well, how, how do you do that? She says, well, she... The donor didn't want any aisles because she didn't want anybody getting up in the middle of her performance. <laughs> <laughs> so when she wrote the check that she got what she wanted. <laughs> wow. Give her what she wants. Yeah. And so what we were thinking here is you'd have, you'd have down in the lower area. We originally, if you remember, we had a center aisle. I thought we, we, thought, we were looking at it like those are the five seats. You've got the center, so we moved the thirds in the front, and then you go up, and then you have an aisle in the back <coughs> of the lower house. And then a main aisle there, so we had an aisle on each side for people who prefer more, more flexibility to get out. Right. So, um, huh. but Looks great. So can you scroll down to the lower review? picture real quick where you can see the stage? Now, I don't know how, how set the space is, but that opening seems very small to me. It's, it's the a, existing stage. Gotcha. It, it, it does. It does with the stage. And, it's funny you picked up on that because when I saw this, uh, like, boy. Well, my son's in band, and I know how much space they take. So yeah. They wouldn't fit on it. Yeah, and, and that's kind of why we brought the, the, the stage to the front. We brought the thrust out. As we get into it, may we may want to look at doing some things. We did, we did something like this in uh, Washington School District where we actually took out and put uh, side... Um, stage on each side of it, and then you had the curtain. So really, you open up all this, the the uh, the main stage and one on each side, where it kind of opens it up. But we want it's it's a real balance between what's this for, and it's right. going to be for all the production. But I can't say I know the structure back there to be able to do it. But that's definitely a uh, it's a very good point. To so you got to really look at how what the main. 
usable for all the different functions that are in place. So getting exciting. Yeah, Very mm -hmm. exciting. I love it. Love the pink. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for thank your thank hard you work. We're your first project of building one that was yes. digitally, I'm saying. I mean, you know, not architecturally, but doing the digital uh, work. Yeah. We, it's, <laughs> it's, to see this, it was pretty amazing. It's pretty uh, amazing. Yeah. It really, and so we have kind of worked with Dr. Garen uh, and Dr. Salas about how we can try to share some of this. So all of this, all of the movement, and, you know, we're absorbing some of that just so we can kind of learn from it. But it's a cool, really interesting project. If you ever near our office, come on by and we can even show you some of it. Well, it's hard to even describe it into words because even renovate doesn't fit. No. It's like yeah. I still, I Convert. Complete conversion. How, how to best <laughs> yeah. take this. Repurpose was one of the ways we've used it. I, that kind of resonates. But again, we need to be talking about it. And the other thing is really important as we go through the images to make sure that we're giving you the type of images that can help do what you want to do. Right. Because there's... Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. 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 Thank you.